Hi everyone, this is Dr. Heather Austin Roblard, and today's lecture video is Integrating Information and Results. As you've seen previously, we will go over what to expect in this lecture video that can be found on the ICRC exam for if you want to apply to be a licensed chemical dependency counselor. Uh, you will be tested on uh, task two and skill two, which is gathering and assessing information, um, as well as summarizing that data, which is what we'll primarily be looking at in this lecture video. Then we will go over the identifying of discrepancies in information that might be given by a client and or any other concerns from others. Then we will interpret the results and integrate all that information to formulate a diagnostic impression and determine the appropriate course of action, as well as organizing and summarizing client data and clinical imp impressions. To review from previous module lectures, we've talked about the importance of using a battery of tests, so not using just one or two tests, but using multiple tests that um, come uh, provide varied, varied sources of information. This is called triangulation. Triangulation and integration go together. With the copious amounts of information that we're gathering in a clinical interview, the challenge is to digest that information, summarize it, and integrate it in a way that we can communicate with the reader in a parsimonious but easy to understand manner. So how do we integrate and communicate the results? Let's look at the different frameworks that the researchers talk about for integrating and summarizing information. One way by Dr. Schneider et al. is the assessment is a story framework. So what is the story that the client is telling you? Listen to the story and then retell the story. Who is the main character? What was your main character's journey? What were the main plots? And what are the main points you want to drive at? So the narratives are the beginning. Listen to the people, empathize with them, interview, investigate, and clarify information. Learn from the data, gather and interpret the data, and then retell the story, explaining the problems and inspiring change. An example would be Winnie the Pooh with an addictive disorder. So Winnie the Pooh has some serious addiction problems to honey. He has persistent cravings and inability to stop, like, you know, he climbs on top of a tree, he can't stop himself from eating all the honey. He puts himself in risky situations, you know, he puts uh, Christopher Roberts in danger. So how did that start? Now if we're looking at an assessment as an hourglass approach. If we start from the bottom, we are collecting the information. We're casting a wide net, maybe more than you would think, like asking really general questions and then continuing to follow up. We're narrowing down those themes, needing to answer specific re referral questions, finding commonalities in the information that we collected. And then that middle part is what is the answer to the referral question? Then when we write it up, we're communicating those themes and those main points. We're answering the referral question in a communication. And then we're providing support to your themes, answers based on the information collected. So finding evidence for the answer. Another way to look at this is uh, through the hypothesis testing that we've talked about in the beginning of this course. So if we look at the inductive phase, so the interviewer asks a question about why they're here and the client responds, I don't know why they sent me here. I don't think I have a problem with drinking. We use a test, the RCQ, which is, tells us that the client is in a pre-contemplation stage. They're in denial of a problem. We take history. The client opted out of treatment seven times despite a mandation from court. We interview with other in individuals close to the client. So the ex-wife says he's got a problem, he's just in denial. So what this tells us is, hmm, the client seems to lack motivation to address alcohol issues. Now, how do we write up this information? We're writing this with as evidence by, the client seems to lack motivation to address alcohol issues, evidence by the interview, what they've said, the test that shows that they're in pre-contemplation, 
the history that again tells us that they have not participated in their treatment and other individuals who have also expressed worry of their denial. So with substance use disorders, we're also gathering more information. Um, so we're looking at legal prog problems through interviewing them and asking them questions, interviewing other people that are close to them, and gathering collateral information, like maybe information from past probation officers. We're looking for social problems, craving, an inability to control their alcohol use, withdrawal symptoms, either through interviewing them, medical records, and a test like the CWA, and then any other things that give us more information and evidence to show that the client seems to lack to have a severe alcohol problems. So when we're writing this communication, we're again showing that they have consistent um, symptoms with alcohol use disorder. As evidenced by what we've gathered in the interview, what we've gathered in the test and screening, as well as um, the presence of withdrawal symptoms th through their history, their CWA scores, and their medical records. Now, if you put it into a table, you can kind of see this information. The interview with the client reports drinking X amount a day, reports getting fired, reports experiencing tremors. Behavioral observation, they arrived at the interview intoxicated. Test one and test two gives a specific score which shows high risk. Um, and then other sources of information could be doctor information, interviewing with other people um, close to the client or whatever else might be available. We also want to look for discrepant information. Um, maybe there is information that doesn't quite up, add up because it's a bad or inappropriate test that they were given. Um, there's individual factors like their reading level, their mood motivation, attention, or exhaustion. There's unreliable information or purposely they're being inaccurate uh, because they have something to lose or gain. So maybe you are providing also or gathering discrepant information. You can address this by knowing the intricacies of the tests and methods you are using, which we've talked about all semester, throwing out bad data, looking at the pattern of data, not just one test source of info, paying attention to the context, something whether they have something to gain or lose. I hope this helps you with uh, the information you need to summarize and uh, write in a formal written evaluation, which will be in the next module for your writing exercise too. Thank you and have a great day.